I've never seen you come down here before, puppy girl. What are you doing, puppy girl? God, I love huskies. They're so beautiful, but oh my god, the, the hair is just always. Yes, there may be glass under this carbon fiber. That's a story for another day. It almost feels like a decade since I've been behind the camera. I'm gonna be completely honest. I wasn't kidding by my last video. I generally was disappointed with a lot of the content I was producing, either with lighting, audio, or not even that, just the quality of the video in general. Out of the three vape videos I released, only the first one had beautiful, crisp, almost everything. I think there was probably the least issues in that video alone. And then the two others after my studio light inevitably died was just, I don't know, poop. For my own sake, so I'm happy with the content, and for your guys' sake that you can actually see, hear, and follow along without any issues, I've upgraded almost everything. In the year I've taken a break, not only do I have now my own individual studio room for recording, I now went out of my way to have proper lighting, and I got a beautiful new Canon 70D. It's been out for a couple years, but the lens I have on it is absolutely incredible. I traded a Pontiac Sunfire for this camera, that Michigan for you, I guess. Now, I'm not 100% using that necessarily as an excuse, Excuse, because I have been making content behind the scenes. I, I especially made a video for the 4,000 sub milestone, but I can't believe we surpassed it so quick. And that's why, once again, I want to show love to you guys by upgrading everything and keeping everything pristine and at least up to date. So I'm on the state line between Ohio and Michigan, and even between there, there's a lot of vapes you guys requested that I generally couldn't find. I can definitely probably find them online and have them shipped in, but given they might even be bunk or counterfeit. Unless, of course, I can find them, you know, from the manufacturer directly, maybe that might be cheaper, I, I don't know. Now to keep things on topic of the video, I'm gonna try not to trail off too much when it comes to things, but I'm gonna maybe make a whole different video explaining everything, if anyone cares. Now, since it's been so long, I don't even actually have those chargers that I made in that video. They're long gone, probably thrown out or maybe even still at my old place, I don't know. So for the sake of this video and the sake of the fact that I can make it at a higher quality, here's how to make a disposable vape charger. But if you want to skip to the specific time on how to charge these specifically, skip to this time. Now all the tools and items used will be linked in the description as always, just like the last video. All you're gonna need is some alligator clips, any kind of charger cable. In this case, I'm using a USB-C, but you can use anything, micro USB, lightning, doesn't matter. A pair of scissors or any kind of cutters. In this case, I have a pair of dykes. Yes, they're called that. A razor blade, or in this case, any kind of knife. And just because I have them on hand, a pair of wire trimmers and or wire cutters. Now I've been asked a lot, what if you just made a charger out of a cable? And yes, you can do that. How efficient is it? Not very. How safe is it? Meh. I wouldn't personally recommend it, but I have done it before. Not all cables are going to be perfect. In this case, the one I was going to show off has really thin, crappy wires, at least for some of them. The positive is pretty okay, but when it comes to everything else, they're really small and thin, and I literally tore the wire just trying to trim it apart. In its place, I found another uh, cable just lying around. We'll go ahead and trim the end. Now, once you peel back the protectant rubber, you may have multiple wires, but in my case, I just have two. Now some wires will have multiple different cables, in this case I have a positive and negative. Some will have red, white, some will have red, white, and green, some will even have red, white, green, and blue. You can most likely in all cases cut out the green and blue as those are both data cables and just use either red and white or red and black in my case. Now once again you want about an inch of bare wire, I'm going to go ahead and peel this back. Now once you have your two select wires and you have about an inch to an inch and a half of some wire exposed. You're going to want to go ahead and trim the protectant off so you can get some bare wire. Now, once again, I recommend using a pair of wire cutters, but if these aren't available, you can either use a knife of some kind, a razor blade, or even a pair of scissors if you somehow have the handiwork to do that. And in this case, I'm using the wire cutter portion of my wire trimmers because the gauges are too small for the wires I'm actually using. Once you have both the positive and the negative cables exposed, you're just going to want to give the wires a little twist. And that way they're not going all over the place when you're trying to put them in the alligator clip. Here's where the alligator clips come into play. Now I'm going to take an alligator clip and a pair of my cutters. I don't have a pair of pliers on hand, unfortunately. I'm just going to lightly smush down on the uh, alligator clip itself. And in this case, we're going to start with the negative first. Put the negative wire in there. Squeeze it down. Now in this case, I crimped it down three times, but if you got a pair of pliers, you should be able to do one good smush. Now we'll switch over to the positive. Now we're going to start at the top in this case, and I'm going to squeeze down once the wire is inside, and I should not be able to pull it out. Perfect. Now we'll do that again in the middle, and we'll do it one more time on the end just because. 
Now after all that, you have a vape charger. This works for multiple different brands of vapes, not only these. You name it, you can most likely charge it with this. And I also do not recommend using any kind of Samsung brick or any kind of fast charging brick. As you can see, this one only outputs 5 volts, which is what we need for these little batteries. Shout out to my friend Jack for donating all these vapes. I only have one out of this whole pile that are mine. These are all his. If it wasn't for him, this video wouldn't be possible, as I don't usually save my dispos. And not only that, with my job, dispos don't usually end up looking too good. These actually look somewhat decent, even though they're dead. And believe it or not, out of this whole pile, I picked the one that keeps hitting. This one somehow has battery. I don't know if he intended that or not. This one's hitting as if it's new. I, I really don't get it. It's Maybe it's just been sitting for a while. I don't know. I don't know why he would include this one in the dead bag. It's hilarious because it's ripping, once again, as if it's new. I really don't know which one else to use, although one of these, once again, are mine. So we'll give this one a rip, see if it's dead. Oh yeah, she did. Now before we break a fresh one open, I thought I'd show you one that I've already done taken apart so I could show you how they work and not only that, show you the easy access points to open them. You don't need to take the face plates off, but I simply did just for an example. As you can see on the bottom on both sides and on the top on both sides, there's little tabs that holds both the bottom and top in place. Now the top is where the coil and juice and everything is stored. There's a whole bottom piece that's inside the vape that this goes inside and this hooks up to the inside battery. Now the bottom of the vape is where the sensor is stored and where it connects to the battery and for this example one the sensor has been cut out and there's no battery in it. The sensor comes out of the bottom real easy, just use a little tool or even you could really just lightly pull it out. Now the reason I'm showing you this example one before breaking in a fresh one is because I keep coming across it. 90% of the batteries are glued in place and as you can see they are very violent with the glue. This battery was not easy to remove. You can even see the glue on the inside of the vape there. It's all down the inside. The battery goes in like this and positives on the bottom. Now charging one of these, it's always variable. Some are glued, some are not. I don't know if that's the difference between the quality or manufacturers. I'm not sure. Now that we know what we're getting into, let's break one open. Now once again on the bottom, there's two clips. I'm not going to remove the artwork on these, but all you need to do is get between the plastic and the metal, push down, and be careful not to cut yourself if you're using a blade, push kind of towards the top of the vape once you're inside, and you should be under the plastic and the metal, and as you can see, the bottom cap is already coming up. You shouldn't have to do much more to just pry up, and there it is. This one is really tight. This one has no wiggle room in it, so what we're going to do is remove the bottom plastic piece so we have ease of access. We're going to use our tool to go inside there and grab the side of the sensor. It's just rubber, but be careful not to cut into it. Just basically pry it out and you can take the bottom cap off. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is with the sensor, uh, it's usually glued in behind by the wires as this one is here. Now, if you go at the sensor at the side with any type of small blade tool, you should be able to pry down on it and bring the sensor out. Now you want to be really careful and do this with your hands, just don't touch the top of the sensor with anything metal and or... Well that was really easy. I can't believe that worked as well as it did. I almost want to open another one as an example because that was a little too smooth. Now I opened the cherry lemon just for an example because I can't believe that other one came out that easy, they usually don't. If you pry down on the side of the sensor, getting it out is usually the hardest part. You usually can just pry away at the glue, like that, and there we go. That's usually how difficult it is to peel back. It's not usually that hard, but as you can see up top, now we have a negative connect port to connect to, because obviously we cannot remove the battery to charge it up here, which this is where the negative port is. It's around this part of the vape. If we put the battery here, line it up with the other one, it's about here somewhere. So although the positive and negative are both there, we can only use the negative. If we touch the positive to the metal casing on the sensor, it will short out the vape, unfortunately. But exposing that positive tab on top of the battery isn't that hard. Now obviously you don't want to puncture the battery, but you're going to want to get at the tab there. So in this case, I'm going to cut and remove the tape surrounding it and pry it up. There we go. Now I should be able to remove the tape lightly with my tool. And there we go. I have the positive end of the battery sticking up. So now if we go ahead and grab our charger, we can connect the positive end to the battery. Make sure there's no tape in the way and you're actually connected to the positive port on the battery. You're going to want to connect to the negative port on the battery as you can see there. So, once again I'll reconnect the positive, And now we have to connect the negative. Which it's fine if it touches the case itself. You just do not want to touch the 
positive or the or the uh, blue wire there, which is for the sensor. So it, you know it can tell when you're hitting the vape. So now all that's left is to carefully put this down. All you're gonna have to do now is simply plug it in. I'm gonna use my water bottle to prop up my phone and I will set a 10 minute timer and come back when this is done. And now that the 10 minutes is up, we can go ahead and disconnect our power. Want to go ahead and disconnect the negative first, then the positive. Now that your charger is unplugged, it's safe to obviously have these two touch or whatever, so you can go ahead and put the charger away. Find the rubber piece you used and make sure it goes back on the same way, obviously the glue side towards the wires. So the bottom plastic piece only goes on one way, as you can see there's a spot for the LED and that's the square flat bottom of this rubber sensor part. You can just slide that back into the bottom there and pop the bottom back on. And that's all it takes. Now we'll give it a test rip, make sure she works. That's a beaut. Now just for the sake of demonstration, since I still have the grape soda open and we use the other different one just for an example. Now we'll put this one down and just for the sake of testing because I honestly haven't tested these too much We'll go ahead and plug this in Now we'll go ahead and set a five minute timer and let it sit Fun fact before this goes off, this is a broken TV hanging above the ceiling of, uh, or I should say off the rafters. I don't even think I can focus on it, it's so bright. There we go. Now that the timer is up, we can go ahead and unplug the charger. Disconnect both first the negative, then the positive. Make sure the positive is pushed down. Make sure to put the sensor obviously back in black facing down, wires facing the glue. And then since this only goes in one way, pop that back in the bottom, and then you can simply snap the bottom back down. That whole time that this one was charging, I was ripping the first one we charged, and it didn't even show a single sign of being weak or dying. This one was charged less than 10 minutes. I'm not sure if overcharging these, let's say you left it on for an hour or 30 minutes, I'm not sure of the risks of that. It could implode the battery, or the battery could swell, heat up, and of course cause a fire. Be careful with any live wires and anything sharp, and always be careful of your surroundings when doing this. Never touch metal to metal in terms of touching the charger together, or of course touching the battery contacts to any other metal, or once again crossing the contacts on the sensor with anything metal. This video didn't take long to make, however, getting everything together and getting the supplies together, it did take a minute to get everything to work properly, so I hope it would, this video was enjoyable and easy to follow along. Now I saw a couple comments comments if they were joking or not asking if I sold these chargers and to be honest I can if I get enough requests asking I will link and put it at the top of the description a page where you can purchase one of these chargers which they will look a lot more professional than this this was just for an example for the video obviously in the old other tutorial I put electrical tape around the connectors and all kinds of sorts just to make it look more professional this one I accidentally crimped on to just the wire and not the actual uh, outside of the wire so it's really droopy and it's only supported by just the wire if I bend this back and forth enough it will snap It'll last a lot longer if you actually crimp it around the rubber or have electrical tape to, add, to combine it all in the one. Unfortunately, I do not on hand. And once again, I'd like to thank you all for 4,000 subscribers. I'd never thought we'd get this far and let alone we surpassed 4,000 already. If you want to see more content like this, please leave a like and subscribe. I love and appreciate you all.